Welcome to Hope is Here. My name is Greg Horn. It is Food for Thought Friday, and so honored that you would join us today. Uh, hope you've had a good week. Hard to believe we're completing the third week of January, and uh, just so honored that here as we start uh, our seventh year of ministry, just giving God all the praise and glory. But I want to share some things with you that God has spoke to me. Uh, Food for Thought Friday, based off a saying my dad used to say when he was giving me some wisdom, but was not making it very like in your face or, you know, it was real subtle. You didn't know he was actually giving you some wisdom, but he would just kind of make a suggestion. Then he would say, food for thought after he was done and then just change the subject. And uh, it was just always so helpful. And I was thankful for that gift that he had in presenting wisdom that way, but not telling me what to do, but just kind of sharing some wisdom or as he would call it, food for thought. So I want to share uh, some things that God spoke to me this week that maybe uh, that as they spoke to me, maybe they'll speak to you and help you. Uh, I love this. I saw this. I'm not sure who wrote this. Uh, it's actually a kind of like a, a cartoon looking thing, but it says, aren't you terrified of what 2024 could be like? Everything is so messed up. And it's two dogs, uh, uh, these cartoon dogs. And the second one says, I think it will bring flowers. Yes. Why? Because I'm planting flowers. <laughs> So I got to ask you today, in all seriousness, okay, and I know you can't see that cartoon that I'm sharing it from, but what are you planning this year? As we complete this third week of the year, are you planting good seeds? Are you planting seeds of, you know, I love the fruits of the Spirit in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. Fruit of the Spirit is peace, love, joy, kindness, patience, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. Are you planting those seeds? I mean, friends, I think it's huge to be just intentional about what are we planting seeds in? Are we doing things that will help bring people to Jesus, That planting seeds in our own life that help us grow closer in our relationship with Jesus? A hard question to ask, but one that I think we need to really take a look at. I saw this quote, uh, I believe uh, Virgil Grant, a pastor in Richmond, Kentucky, posted on social media, uh, a, a friend of mine, and I like this. He says, uh, life humbles you. As you grow old, you stop chasing the big things and start valuing the little things. Alone time, enough sleep, a good diet, long walks, and quality time with loved ones. Simplicity becomes the ultimate goal. You know, friends, that's one of the words that God's kind of spoke to me this year about maybe simplifying my life some. And uh, I still got a long way to go, but uh, half the battle is just knowing what the situation is. And that was one of the words where God uh, tried to look at a word for the year. And that's one that uh, came to me in my quiet time a couple weeks ago as I was reflecting on 2023, but also on what God might want to do in my life, in my heart in 2024 and sim simplify or simplicity in this form of it. And I want to ask you today, what is it maybe that you could simplify in your life? We all have something that maybe we need to cut of our cut out of our schedule or some stuff we need to give away, uh, declutter, you know, simplify. I think sometimes we declutter and help simplify. And um, I don't know what that is for you, but I believe uh, I know I needed to hear it earlier this week, and I believe somebody listening or watching on our YouTube channel also needs to. I like this quote here, uh, a little poem. It's a uh, written by Laura Jean, I believe Truman's the last name. She said, you can't heal the people you love. You can't make choices for them. You can't rescue them. You can promise that they won't journey alone. You can loan them your map, but this trip on earth is theirs. And friends, I've been guilty of that, of trying to rescue people, trying to be the savior and, um, Really trying to do a better job at that. I think I grew in that in 2023. I still want to grow in it. 2024, pray for people, give them wisdom as need to help them, but not try to save them from every bad choice or uh, knowing that you know they've got to run their race, uh, the life that God's put before them, as Paul talks about in the Bible. So I want to say that one more time. It's great. Uh, 
quote here by Laura Jean Truman. You can't heal the people you love. You can't make choices for them. You can't rescue them. You can promise that they won't journey alone. You can loan them your map, but this trip is theirs. Pastor Mike McClure posted on Twitter recently, Always pray to have eyes that see the best, a heart that forgives the worst, a mind that forgets the bad, and a soul that never loses faith. Oh, that's so good. i got to share that one more time. Pastor Mike McClure Jr., actually. Always pray to have eyes that see the best. So powerful there, friends. Secondly, have a heart that forgives the worst. I want to remind you today, friends, that Jesus said, forgive so that you will be forgiven. And the same measuring stick that you use to measure others about forgiveness will be used to measure you. And man, when I read that passage of Scripture, I believe it's in Matthew. I may be wrong. It's one of the four Gospels. Uh, Man, I I really have to reevaluate because sometimes I got my measuring stick out. Maybe I'm the only one who struggles with that. (laughs) I got a hard time believing that, but at least I'm willing to admit it and be honest, okay, that, um, you know, we just need to forgive. And thing I share every year on Hope is Here. I believe this is the first time I shared it in 2024, so that's pretty good. January 19th, almost three weeks here before I shared it. But the number one thing I've learned in doing ministry now for 22 years is that people are harder on themselves than God is. People are harder on themselves than God is. And, uh, friends, sometimes the thing you got to do is you just got to forgive yourself. You can't forgive others because you can't forgive yourself for mistakes, unwise decisions, bad decisions, okay? Let's keep it real. But, friends, if Jesus can forgive you, you can forgive yourself. And I had a friend say this to me one time when I was having problems several years ago, many years ago now, forgiving myself for an unwise, selfish decision I made, and he just said, you know, if you've asked God forgiveness, you repented, and you're, you know, walked away, uh, you know, you're acting like the cross wasn't enough. You're putting Jesus back up on the cross when you won't forgive yourself if you've asked him for forgiveness. And, man, that just stung. <laughs> man, that stung. But I needed to hear that, and he's right. And I got to believe it's somebody listening or watching on YouTube today that you're like, oh, my goodness. That's right. Man, I'm I'm putting Jesus back on that cross because I'm telling him that, you know what? You didn't take enough uh, pain and suffering for forgiveness of my selfishness, my unwise decisions. So, friends, I want to encourage you today. Maybe you got to start with forgiving yourself. And I want to remind you what the Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 1. For now there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. In other words, friends, if you accepted Jesus, you are not under condemnation anymore. And if you ask God for forgiveness for whatever mistake you've made, the Bible says in the book of Psalms, as far as the east is to the west, that God remembers it no more. But unfortunately, it seems like we hit the rewind button sometimes. So friends, I just want to encourage you today to have, like Pastor Mike McClure Jr. says, a heart that forgives the worst. He also said to you know, have a mind that forgets the bad. Oh my goodness, friends, that one's so true. The enemy has had me hit the rewind button over and over in my life. And I want to encourage you what Philippians chapter 3 verse 13 says. You heard me share it a lot. I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. Such a great verse for January. We start a new year, okay? I focus on this one thing, Paul said, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. You know, for any occasion, yeah, we'll go back there and you know revisit there, but you know, it's okay to do that for a second. But man, you don't need to set up camp there, okay? And then just say, nope, I'm forgiven. God, you forgave me. And, you know, or you forgive somebody else. You had something bad done to you. You know, and we just can't go back and live those things over and over. And I get it, friends. I've had a lot of wounds in my life. God's in his 50s. Some that others cause, some self-inflicted. And yet, you know what? We have got to forget the bad. 
Jesus, uh, love and lamentation, chapter 3, verses 22 and 23, it says that God's mercies are new every morning. In other words, we get a fresh start. And I love the next part in verse 23. Great is your faithfulness, Lord. So, friends, God gave us a wonderful calendar after death. B.C., before Christ, A.D., after death, we have 365 days in a year. More importantly, broke it up into 24-hour periods. We get a fresh start every day. So we have got to forget the bad and forget what happened. And maybe you just had a bad day yesterday. It just was a bad day, and those happened. But the Bible says in Psalm 118, verse 24, this is the day the Lord has made. I shall be glad and rejoice in it. Friends, I would encourage you to rejoice in it because Jesus does. All right, Pastor Mike McClure Jr. says, One, always pray to have eyes that see, that, that see the best. Always pray to have eyes that see the best. Secondly, a heart that forgives the worst. Third, a mind that forgets the bad. And fourth, a soul that never loses faith. And friends, I know sometimes, you know, the Bible talks about we walk by faith and not by sight. I get it, been there, totally understand. And that's why it's so important that you're spending time reading God's Word and that you listen to podcasts like Hope is Here. And I know so many of you make it a part of your morning routine. Jeff Musgrave, Tom Haley, uh, you know, those guys I know listen faithfully in the morning. That's part of their morning routine. And I'm so thankful for that and that they listen. But number two, that how he said it's helped impact their lives. And it's just we all need hope. As I've shared before from my friend Mike Bro, I love the quote, a lot of things overrated in life, but hope's not one of them. And a soul that never loses faith. And we need to be encouraged. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13 said, these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. And so don't lose your faith. Don't lose hope. Know that God loves you. You may feel like nobody else in the world loves you today, but I'm thankful that God loves you. He loves you, friends. That's why he sent Jesus. He wants to have a personal relationship with you. And we can always have hope because of Jesus. I'll share a, a, a quote uh, from Robert Schuler today uh, as we come near the end of Food for Thought Friday. He says, Never cut a tree down in the wintertime. Never make a decision in the low time. Wait. Be patient. The storm will pass. The spring will come. And friends, I know we're in the winter season. I mean, that's what is that weather-wise. We have winter, spring, summer, and fall. But it may not be just winter with the weather. It may be winter in your heart, in your mind, just in your life. And you're just like, man, is the sun ever going to shine again? Is my heart going to be back to life again? I love that song by Danny Gogi called Tell Your Heart to Beat Again. And uh, that song just really spoke to me when my dad died unexpectedly in March of 2016. And, man, it just was hard to think that my heart would feel the same. And, honestly, there's always still a little piece in my heart that misses him but it, 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 it is so much God's done to heal and help that. And uh, lots, lots more laughing and memories, of, thoughts of good memories, not the painful part of missing him. So make sure that uh, you realize that to be patient, the storm will pass, and that spring is going to come here again soon. Thanks for listening to Food for Thought Friday. My name's Greg Horn, and this is Hope is Here.